We're going to jump right into this episode. Yes. This is one that I've been looking forward to for a long time. We have been setting this up for the last couple of months <laughs> uh, in eager anticipation. Uh, as you can see, especially with uh, with Jess and her out of time shirt. And then I've got a, a Biff Pitbull uh, hoverboard shirt going on. We love Back to the Future. But I dare say there's somebody that we've got on tonight that loves Back to the Future mm -hmm. even more. Yes. So much, in fact, that he runs the back to the future.com. He runs the website. He runs the back to the future social media channels. He runs the store. This guy is, is wonderful. I've known him for, if I'm not mistaken, about 20 years. Um, and you know, on Bama geeks, we, we love pop culture. We love to tie in pop culture back to our state, back to Alabama, mm -hmm. because, a lot of things people wouldn't know about Alabama and how, you know, how it relates to the entertainment industry and pop culture, you know, we get to bring those nuggets out. We love to highlight the stuff. Mm -hmm. So we're going to bring him on right now. This is Mr. Stephen Clark. Yay. Hey, hey, Steve. how are hey. Yeah. hey welcome Stephen. Hey, good to see you. Good to have you. Oh, it's fantastic <laughs> to have you, my friend. Wow, it is. Uh, we were sitting here talking right before we started recording, and it has been nine years since uh, we've seen you in person. Wow. Been a while. Yeah. Last time we saw Steve, he was uh, at the Alabama Phoenix Festival in 2013. Mm -hmm. He had his booth set up there, and he had uh, Oliver and Terry Holler mm -hmm. uh, with their uh, their DeLorean. And uh, you know what we said. After nine years, it's been way too long. <laughs> it has. It has. We, we, we've kept gotten it... a little grayer since. <laughs> Same. Same. I, yeah. I was a brunette last time you saw me. <laughs> yeah, that, that's kind of a going thing in this podcast, by the way, Steve. We, we, we discussed just how old we are, and yeah, it's it's just a normal thing. We're all gray. <laughs> yeah. So we, we wanted to. Uh, Steve's been a, a gentleman that I've wanted to have on the podcast for a while, and and. We finally uh, got to make it happen, and th the timing is on purpose mm -hmm. because, like I said, we haven't I haven't seen him in in nine years in person, and we don't live that far from each other. No, we don't. <laughs> in fact, I, it, it, over the last four years, I've lived even closer. <laughs> but we're finally going to get to see each other the weekend of April twenty second, twenty third. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, the Huntsville pop culture expo uh, that's probably not the correct name of the show i think it's the huntsville comic-con and uh pop culture expo i believe that's there right yes there you go, yes. there, you go. Expo .com. Yeah. there you go so steve is is in north alabama and so this is a nice hopefully quick little journey oh, for yeah. him to get over there okay. real easy <laughs> so uh, i know jess and and kevin and i we're all going to go mm -hmm. up uh, that Saturday, and we're finally going to get to see him in person for the first good, time good. in yep. ages. So cannot wait. And um, you know, we're, we'll get to all that. Uh, we'll make sure that you you guys have the details on that, so you can come and join Steve and and all the wonderful celebrity guests, including Leah Thompson. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Yep, yeah. she'll be there as well as Oliver and Terry with the DeLorean. They'll also mm -hmm. be there. Yes. So uh, it'll be and, a lot of fun. We're I'm, I'm looking forward to it. You know, we've. Uh, uh, the hollers and I have been trying to do, uh, this show for the last couple of years and we were committed in 2020 and, uh, yep. uh something, yep. something happened, uh, worldwide, uh, and we had to back out and then we kind of thought about it for last year and it just didn't gel real well again. And so, uh, uh, third time's the charm. So yeah. did you guys go back to the future and fix that? Maybe we personally didn't, but we know people. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, uh, yeah, you, you texted me back uh, a couple of months before that one in mm -hmm. 2020. like, Hey, you guys coming up. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> and so we, we were on the edge of, of coming up there. And then you let me know uh, we've yeah. all backed out. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah. well then we're not coming. <laughs> But we did go last year, but uh, we're well, definitely going to make it. 
We did. We went up there mm-hmm. to meet Emily Swallow, you know, who plays the armorer mm-hmm. on the Mandalorian. So that was our, and uh, her agent's one of our really good friends uh, okay. from mm-hmm. Orlando. So uh, we wanted to come up and see them. So, mm-hmm. so this year we're going to come right back and it's all for you and Leah and Oliver and Terry. That's nice. right. <laughs> Mostly for Leah. And the <laughs> <laughs> Mostly I, for, for I'm, me. I'm glad, I'm glad I'll get to see you. Yeah, man, I, I, I'm coming up primarily for you and for Oliver and Terry, for sure. Um, and we got to just got to meet Oliver and Terry last summer when mm-hmm. we were on vacation in, in Myrtle Beach. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. It, it, it had slipped my mind that that's where they live. And you yeah. and you messaged me. He's like, you're going to see Oliver and Terry. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> oh, yeah, yep. they live here. <laughs> yeah, and we had a kind of nice dinner with them the, uh, while we were up there and mm-hmm. sitting the there in the sitting there in the restaurant with the DeLorean parked right outside the window and watching the crowd gather around the car. Oh, yeah. And everybody ignored that car. <laughs> All the crowd, everywhere they go. And uh, got to sit in the car. Got to, good, good. Oliver uh, set that up. I got to sit in it. Got a few pictures of me sitting in their car. So yeah. And, and while we were in there eating uh, people that were actually taking pictures of the car, we came back out and some people had dropped some money in the, nice. uh, the Mr. Fusion in the back for the donations for team Fox. So that was good yeah. to see. Mr. Compassion. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, maybe uh, maybe when they're set up at Huntsville, Jess, you can actually like, stand on the hoverboard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. They've got one they set up outside the car. And yeah. uh, actually, I met, uh, I've already met Leah once uh, at uh, Atlanta Comic Con, and that was back in 20. 20- 18 wasn't it 2018 i think when yeah. we went 2018 2019 yeah um i always you know 2020 i always usually usually lose a year somewhere in my going back and trying to remember things so but i have met leah before super wonderful she's so nice i mean i yeah. go up for my yeah. photo op and she says she says, well, come here, beautiful girl. And I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, you're Leah Thompson. You're far more prettier than I am. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, funny, uh, I met Leah in Dragon Con 2015, 2014, 2015, <laughs> and I walked up to her table. And I'm like, we have a mutual friend. And she's like, yeah, who? And I said, Stephen Clark. And she goes, oh, my gosh, how do you know Steve? And I'm like, we're from Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to remind her ahead of time that I'm here. So uh, so it's not a big shock, but I think she forgets that I live here in, in Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, Steve, once again, man, we're so glad that uh, that glad you to decided here. to join us. And yeah, absolutely, it's an so honor. We we want to talk about you. We want to talk about the franchise and your ties okay. to it, and just how everything came to be. So, oh. I guess we can start all the way back at the beginning. Um, obviously, you know, the catalyst for your love of Back to the Future was the the first movie. So, yeah. Yeah. before the movie hit, what caught your eye about it? What what made you say? man, I've really got to go see this movie about this stainless steel car that <laughs> doesn't really exist anymore. Well, I'll, I'll be honest. I did not even know what a DeLorean was in 1985 until the movie came out. I never even, I'm not a big car guy, so I didn't really know. Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure I'd heard it, but I just, just never connected the dots, but no, uh, my, my fiance, who's my wife now of 35 years, uh, we were big <laughs> Michael J. Fox fans. And so, uh, and we we went to the movies all the time. Uh, we were we had just just uh, a few days after the movie came out, we were in, we we got engaged. But we had been dating for a couple of years. We were high school sweethearts, and so we you know we just went to the movies all the time. We saw everything back in the eighties, mm-hmm. and so um, didn't know much about Back to the Future. Knew Michael J. Fox was in it. I knew Spielberg had some kind of connection to it. Uh, what was interesting because he does not appear in the trailer is I had no idea that Christopher Lloyd was even in the movie until he popped out of the DeLorean in the parking lot. (laughs) And so I was a huge taxi fan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, when door opens, the going door opens and uh, Doc Brown pops out, I go, (gasps) It's Christopher Lloyd. I had no idea he was in the film at all because he doesn't appear in the trailer. The teaser trailer. I don't even know if his name appeared in the credits. I'll have to go back and look. But uh, uh, it was a complete surprise. So that's what kind of 
uh, enthralled us to go. Just we were big Michael J. Fox fans from Family mm -hmm. Ties, of course, and so uh, and we just saw everything that Spielberg did, and and and, and anything eighties and sci-fi, and, mm -hmm. and you know, I, I I was I was just on the cusp of really starting to appreciate time travel. So the mm -hmm. year before when uh, the Terminator came out, that was really the first real big time travel mm -hmm. movie I ever really kind of wrapped my brain around and just thought, you know, started trying to, you know, figure out the timelines mm -hmm. and, you know, mind blown. And uh, <laughs> so uh, when Back to the Future came out, uh, it was, wow, you know, all in now. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but you know, Back to the Future was just it was obviously a, a big hit for uh, the studio and for the uh, for the actors, for the filmmakers, for everybody. Uh, Huey Lewis and the music, everything was you know everything mm -hmm. was Back to the Future in the summer of '85. Yes. And so, uh, you know, so I saw it opening weekend. Uh, my fiance. Uh, by the time we saw it a second time, we were now engaged. We went and saw it again. So we saw it a couple of times in theaters and then kind of kind of forgot about it until it came out on home video mm -hmm. in uh, the, the following summer. I believe it was in May of uh, uh, 86. Wow. So mm -hmm. uh, it came out, you know, back then you didn't really buy VHS. You rented yep. VHS. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. VHS was like 90 bucks a tape at the time. Mm -hmm. so nobody <laughs> bought VHS. Uh, didn't have a laser disc player, didn't have a, a, a CED player or a, a, a Betamax. It only had VHS. And so, mm -hmm. but it wasn't until uh, I just stumbled across uh, an article just one day in my local mall at the, the Regency Square Mall. It's here in Florence, Alabama. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a magazine that I was familiar with, but I didn't subscribe to it called Starlog. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah. Starlog back oh, in yeah. the day. So uh, this is the actual uh, issue. Starlog uh, issue number 108 <laughs> uh, <laughs> from uh, July of 86. Oh, wow. And uh, there was an article in there from a, a, a Disney Imagineer named Bruce Gordon. And he wrote an article called the other Marty McFly. And he, uh, started, it's a three page black and white article, uh, had some illustrations and all, and talked about time travel and talked about all these great things that I missed <laughs> the first time <laughs> I saw it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the big thing was that at the end of the film, uh, the uh, Twin Pines Mall became the Lone Pine Mall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. right. I didn't notice that in the film. And so right. I had to quickly run out and go rent uh, Back to the Future on VHS and on my VCR, or sit there with a remote frame by frame by frame, <laughs> doing these things and trying to catch all these things. There was another thing in there mm -hmm. he talks about uh, that uh, from a film filmmaking standpoint that really I just thought was ingenious that you know, at the f end of the film, you see the clock tower ledge is broken where they had been up on, Doc Brown mm -hmm. had been up on the clock tower and broke it. It's not broken at the beginning of the film, but it is broken at the end of the yeah. film. Mm -hmm. you see it, uh, when they, when Marty comes back. And so I thought, oh, that's, that's ingenious. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's <laughs> just yeah. those little Easter eggs. Those little, we didn't call them Easter eggs, eggs back then, but uh, uh, it was just that little details. But there was another thing he talked about uh, that was kind of the, uh, focus of his article was that um, there's a fleeting image off in the background at the beginning of the film when Doc Brown is about to be shot by the Libyans. Mm -hmm. And he it was his theory that this was Marty returning from 1955. Since we see him return at the end of the film, mm -hmm. his theory was that, well, they just swapped places and there's another Marty McFly off in the distance that uh, we did not notice at the beginning of the film. And right. uh, oh, um, okay. it's an interesting article. Uh, mm -hmm. and, yeah. uh, Bob Gale says, no, no, that 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 was never really uh, our intention. <laughs> but uh, Dean Cundy, who was the uh, uh, director of photography, the cinematographer, uh uh, he's been shown the uh, the video, and you can see off in the way, way in the back of the background, uh, mm -hmm. off in the dark, 
you can actually see the moment uh, Doc Brown tosses his pistol when he's got his hands up, mm -hmm. you can see somebody walking in the background. Ah, Probably somebody at the mall. But uh, yeah, say somebody on the film crew is in trouble. Somebody in the film yeah. crew. Somebody <laughs> walking. And so that was his, uh, his theory that Marty was also uh, a second Marty appeared at the beginning of the film. Mm -hmm. uh, and so obviously I had to go and I spent hours <laughs> and uh, really, really couldn't really see it on a, on a VHS. But you know, once DVD came out mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and 4k and uh, Blu-ray and all the good high def uh, formats we have now, you can actually see it pretty, pretty clear. And huh. so uh, um, okay. it's, 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 it's an interesting hmm. theory. So that was one of those things that really just, you know, turn my geek switch on. Uh, I thought, that, that, that's pretty cool. And so, you know, it's actually pretty cool that they haven't, even with as enamored as studios are with overcorrecting um, mistakes in films now that they haven't gone and scrubbed that out. Yeah. They haven't gone and fixed it. Bob Gale and, uh, and, and Bob Zemeckis are really uh, very adamant about not making any changes whatsoever to their films. Mm -hmm. uh, the yeah, only thing they good. have ever done was when uh, Back to the Future came out on VHS, the studio uh, really wanted them to make the audience know that there was a sequel coming eventually. Mm. And so mm. To Be Continued was added to the end of Back to the Future on VHS. Oh, wow. And I didn't so, know that. Uh, it was not yeah. in theaters and people to this day. So, oh, I saw it was at the end of the movie. No, it was never... No. Wow. It was never on the theatrical cut. Mm -hmm. And so that was added to the credits at the end of the first film uh, to let everybody know in 1986 that they were planning to do a sequel. It took another three years for it to materialize. Um, but uh, now when the video, when the movies came out on DVD, they wanted to make it look exactly like their original intent. So uh, to be continued was removed from part one uh, when it came out on DVD in 2009, uh, 2008, nine, mm -hmm. 2009, that's right, 2009. Huh. And oh. so uh, it was removed. So that's the only edit that has ever occurred to any of the three Back to the Future films. Wow. Uh, I'll take that back. Uh, the uh, trailer that appears at the end of part two, when it was released on home video for, uh, actually again on DVD and Blu-ray, they took out coming summer to uh, 1990 for part three. So you, you don't have the coming mm -hmm. 1990 summer 1990. That is, that's been removed uh, as well. So that's the only edits is at the end of the mm -hmm. films, but nothing throughout the films have ever been edited in terms of any corrections or edit mm -hmm. or errors. You know, there's a couple of places mm -hmm. where you can see, uh, some crew members and uh, <laughs> uh, there's a reflection at uh, when you see the DeLorean at the end of the film back up real close to the camera, right before it zooms off, you can actually see camera uh, film crew, the reflection in the silver barcode on the, oh. on the DeLorean. And, <laughs> oh, okay. Actually okay. Point that out. Uh, Bob and Bob point that out in uh, the commentary. Okay. So, it's things like I really that. appreciate that they that they have not that, that they've yeah, been able to yeah. keep the studio away from that and and not correct things yeah. because yeah. a lot of studios, I mean <coughs> Disney, um, likes <laughs> to really really do that, you know. So, so that's what that's what got me into Back to the Future initially was uh, big Michael J. Fox fan, mm -hmm. and then when it came out on VHS and I read that article, oh, I was all in at that point. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I would say he was the draw-in force for me when we I saw it at the theater when it came out, and mm. yeah. it, that was the that was the drawing force for me to go was him. So, uh, at at what point uh, after seeing that did you start be start going beyond being a fan of the movie and actually <laughs> wanted to get and, and started to to try to become part of the franchise? Uh, well, I. Uh, after the sequels had run their course uh, by the summer of uh, 1990, uh, we started. I started learning that uh, Universal had a Back to the Future ride planned uh, for the mm -hmm. summer of 1991. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so uh, that really interested me a lot. Uh, in summer of 91, well, the fall of 91 also was when the, the animated series came out too. So 
you know, we, we, Back to the Future fans were really bombarded with a lot of Back to the Future in a two year period. So we had mm -hmm. two sequels, uh, a theme park ride, and an animated series all within a two year period. And wow. then after the animated series had run its course, you know, the ride opened in, a, in multiple parks after that. But we went for a long time with nothing else for mm -hmm. a very, very long time. Yeah. Uh, but, um, but it was uh, in the uh, it was in the January of '92. It was for, for my fifth, fifth year wedding anniversary. My mm -hmm. wife uh, decided to surprise me with a trip to Universal Studios, <laughs> Florida, and it already called my boss and and uh, got me approved to have a vacation for our wedding anniversary that I didn't know about. And at Christmas, uh, I found out that we're going on a five year anniversary trip to Universal Studios, Florida. And I knew why at that point. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no so surprises. Got, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I got to ride the movie. Uh, that was their big uh, moniker at the time, mm. uh, their branding. And uh, uh, I got to tell you, once once I got in a DeLorean and was flying in that sim a flight simulator, there was no turning back for me. <laughs> no uh. turning back. I was... I thought I was in for the for the sequels, but once once I got on the actual ride, mm -hmm. I mean, we rode it several times that trip, and uh, <laughs> I came back from that trip. Uh, I just I was all in, and I thought I have somehow got to find a way to get a v at the time VHS. I've got to get a VHS copy of the footage from the ride there I, there's just uh, no doubt about it i have got to have that for my personal collection I, i've got to have that and in 92 i had already bought a few movie props uh back then mm -hmm. uh you know this is you know early early years of aol the long time <laughs> before the internet. uh this is still several years before internet had uh uh hit and so uh, there was a few movie collectible website. I mean, uh, uh, magazines you could get. Uh, I, I do not remember the name of the publications. Uh, I was a big uh, music collector up until that point. Goldmine was a big uh, magazine that's still around mm -hmm. today that you mm -hmm. could buy to find. But I found uh, some some movie marketplace or something, and I found somebody who was selling a couple of movie props. I bought a. Uh, a dust jacket to the uh, to the Gray Sports Almanac, and uh, yeah. uh, but the very first uh, movie prop I ever bought, and I still have it in my collection, was I have a prototype of the 1885 map that hung at the Ooh. train station Ooh. in Park Street when Marty and Doc go to oh. uh, uh, Nash Ravine and they see the tracks are not there. There's a map that's right there and they're pointing at that map. Mm -hmm. I have an early production prototype of that map. Full oh. scale, looks exactly like it does on wow. film. It's not Very fully nice. Good. And in the movie, there's just a blank track across Shonash Ravine. My version has a dotted line across it. And mm. I believe they decided, uh, oh, that's not gonna show up on film. We wanna show that that the track is actually not there, not that it's, you know, planned to be built. And so, uh, so I bought that and had it in my collection uh, about a year at that point. So calling around, I, I started calling around Universal Studios, talking to anybody I could talk to. And <laughs> uh, my goal was, hey, I'm going to donate this big map to Universal Studios Florida, hang at the ride mm -hmm. uh, that you can, you know, when you're in the, uh, line and uh, in the different aisles that some you know you could actually look at this map and I, that was mm -hmm. going to be my selling point. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, I could convince them to give me a copy of the ride, <laughs> and uh, so I would uh, call for a few weeks, get transferred around, and hit a bunch mm -hmm. of brick walls, and I would try off and on throughout the summer, and sometime in the late summer. And this is uh, this is before the second season of the animated series had uh, aired in September of 92. One fateful day, I was transferred to Bob Gale's office. Mm. And Bob <laughs> still had an office on the back lot at Universal Studios at the time. And I tease him to this day that, <laughs> oh, I bet he wished he hadn't answered that phone. That day. <laughs> 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 uh, 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 
because he, he he met one of the biggest Back to the Future geeks that was ever created. Uh, <laughs> and so um, so talking with Bob and uh, you know I, I I learned a lot about Bob and you know I already knew a lot about Bob but I had mm-hmm. just never met him had never written a letter or anything but uh, his uh, a uh, personal assistant at the time told me about a new uh, fan club. It just a uh, there was a uh, there was an official fan club that was out during the sequels, but it was it was really built only to uh, promote the two sequels mm-hmm. and a little bit of the ride in the animated series. It was only four issues, mm-hmm. uh, and it went away in late 1990. And uh, but uh, Bob Gale's personal assistant. Uh, introduced me to a gentleman who lived in California, Southern California, who had just started an unofficial fan club. And they said, you need to meet this guy. And Mm -hmm. so uh, they introduced me to him and uh, he and I joined forces and we ran uh, like, again, a uh, pre-internet fan club for about uh, a couple of years together. Then he kind of stepped away and just kind of turned it over to me, but it we uh, published a, a newsletter, a quarterly newsletter called the Hill Valley Telegraph, which was the name of the newsletter, the newspaper in Hill Valley. Mm-hmm. And so we did interviews with uh, Bob and a bunch of different film uh, people from the films, the cast, the crew, mm-hmm. uh, did a lot of, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, articles. I wrote a lot of the early articles for it. And uh, so I, I did the publishing, would mail it out. And we had at the peak of it, we had about 500 su- subscribers to our fanzine and um and around 95 was when i started hearing about this thing called the world wide web <laughs> and uh, didn't know much about it but uh being a uh a, 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 an ex uh programmer old school programmer um i self-taught myself how to do html in the early mm-hmm. days and so uh, i was also uh uh, a D base programmer, a Fox base programmer. And so I learned how to do uh, coding and generate my own web pages mm-hmm. through uh, Fox base and Fox pro. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I had, I, I, I registered a, uh, a dial up account and uh, as fate would have it, uh, there was a, uh, an ISP in North Alabama in Huntsville called traveler internet services. And so I, I registered uh, <laughs> Uh, my login ID was time. So uh, my email address was time at traveler.com. <laughs> nice. Very nice. <laughs> uh, I, just awesome. a, I just had a dial up account. Uh, <laughs> you remember in the old days, uh, web pages had this little tilde and then like the web page mm-hmm. name after it. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. I just had a, uh, for about a year and a half, I ran this just little web page and, uh, and then in early 97, I registered the bttf.com domain. Mm-hmm. And uh, by that time, we had already disbanded the, the, the public publication. Mm-hmm. It didn't make sense to uh, put out a quarterly newsletter because by the time you got it to everybody, everybody already read it on the Internet and it wasn't right. new anymore. And yeah. so I took the uh, newsletter online fully and... Uh, uh, and register bttf.com at the time back to the future.com was available for me to register, but I was terrified by Universal's <laughs> legal department that I thought they will come looking for this. <laughs> and, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to invite any trouble. And so I knew that, uh, me and a few other people, there wasn't a whole lot of people in in the early nineties knew what BTTF stood for. And so mm-hmm. I, I think I'm pretty safe going with that. Actually, I learned uh, what, it, you know, the, I, I give credit. Uh, Starlog was the first place I ever saw it. And so mm-hmm. they, they, they kind of uh, spearheaded that, but I, I took it and ran with it for many, many years. And mm-hmm. so I uh, ran the website for a long time. I uh, got to know Bob real well, got to know Tom Wilson real well, Claudia Wells, uh met I've met so many 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 people throughout mm-hmm. the 30 years this 30 years I've been doing that this year mm-hmm. and wow. so wow. I, I say professionally uh, <laughs> uh, but um, but you know when when I met Bob was really 
kind of kicked me, you know, they, his office encouraged me to, to kick it into high gear. And so I've never stopped. So it's, uh, I'm one of those that just doesn't know when to, when to quit. <laughs> <laughs> well, really quickly, uh, for our, our video, uh, watchers, uh, right now we've got, mm-hmm. we got back to the future.com pulled up and that's Steve's handiwork. When did you, when were you allowed to say, or when, when do they tell you, okay, back to the future.com go with it. Uh, in 2015. So I, in 2012, probably just before, uh, you and I last saw each other, I acquired, I finally acquired the back to the future.com domain. It had been registered by some foreign news company. Uh, I had partnered with a gentleman for a while and, he had acquired it and we were going to partner. And anyway, it landed in my hands and I, I ran with it. So uh, uh, it wasn't long after I launched back to the future.com that uh, uh, Universal's legal department did come looking for me. So, uh, <laughs> you know, somebody uh, in their legal department that found, you know, saw the domain and, and I got a, a cease and desist letter in the mail. And I immediately went to my good buddy, Bob Gale, and say, um, I need help. he took care of it they said no look we we want steven doing this he's been doing this a long time we want him out there doing this and so uh and in 2015 for the uh 30th anniversary i partnered with universal home video um the i I don't know if you'll be able to see it on on uh youtube i'll get it in there as close as i can it's a little anyway right there oh mm-hmm. i see it yeah ah, nice. that's like com. so universal mm-hmm. actually uh uh adopted back to the future.com as their official website for the series in 2015 and i've been uh official uh ever since 2015 so that it, it was it was quite gratifying after have done it for so long bit. Yeah. Uh, to finally be recognized as yeah. truly the official source and, uh, and so it's, it's been a great, uh, it's been a great run. I've, I've had a really good time doing it. 